Hi there. Today we will continue our lecture on Johansson Juselius Core Integration Test. As I mentioned in the our in our previous uh, video, um, the optimum leg length by using VAR is nine. But before that, I want to introduce a little bit about what is Johansson Juselius. Test. In statistics, jo the Johansson Juselius test named after Soren Johansson. You may can find or serve the article written by Soren Johansson, where Johansson test in a way to determine if there is uh, one single or more time series are co-integrated in the long term. So this is the uh, definition uh, or the rule by using Johansson Juselius because we want to find the uh, the co-integration term uh, in the long run process. So let's start the test by using eView software. Firstly, you have to click on GDP control, R E E R and GDP. Open as group. Right. When this box appear, go to view. Then click on co-integration co test. Then click on Johansson system. Right. In here, as you can see, uh, the lag interval proposed is 1-1. One, one. So just change it to 9. Alright. So click on Oxford Lanham. The table of Oxford Lanham. Then click OK. It shows here it's near singular metric. So you cannot use 9 lag as proposed by VAR. But you cannot go 10. It may be you have to go less than 9. Let's try at uh, lag 8. So, alright. Change to 8. Then click on Oxford Lanham. Then, okay. This is the result of Johansson Juselius. And the result of Johansson Juselius is, di is divided by two. The first one is trace statistic, this result. And the second one is max agent statistic. And this is the significant level of 5% and 1%. 5% and 1% for max, max agent uh, statistic. As you can see here, there is star star for lambda trace statistic and also double star for lambda max statistic. This result shows that in the long term, there is exist at least one co-integration factor in the long term. Therefore, we have to transfer this result into word because we want to report the result, right? So firstly, here you have to freeze, then you have to copy the result like this okay copy the result then you click copy right let's go to another layout here all right this is the result table if we want to report this is the result right just click all right Seven, seventy five, seven six. All right, seven six. Okay, this is the result that I said just now. This is a copy of the result Johansson Juselia from EView. So just copy the copy the information over here. Put in the red table propose here. This is the way how you can uh, report the result. Okay. Just change this one. Change to uh, RGDP, REER, and FDI. Right. Um, just transfer the information from here into this row. This one into here and this one into here. 
Then I see just now when you finish on transferring the information for lambda trace, then you have uh, to start transfer the information for lambda max into here. All right. So as you can see here, there is here hypothesis null and this is hypothesis alternative. Right. Uh, I put here two star. Mean uh, it means that uh, double star meaning uh. Both of the result, lambda trace and lambda max, is uh, significant at 99%. Alright? That's why you have to put uh, 2 star. This is because 55.13 is large than 35 and 65 and is large than 29.68. The same result also appear in the maximum edging value. Where 42.62 is larger than 20.97 and 25.95. Right. Let assume that. Let assume that. This result is larger than. It's less than. Um, we change it to 24. When we change it to 24, I have to put 1 star because 24.62 is less than 1% but large than 5%. In other words, 24.62 is less than 25 and 52 but large than 20.97. That's why I put it here, 1 star if significant at 95% while 2 star is significant at 99%. So in this case, I just change the result to make another example for you to understand. So as I mentioned earlier, I put 2 star when the trace statistic value is large than 1% uh, critical value and 5% critical value. In other words, 55.13 is large than 35.65 and also large than 29.68. But here, there is another example that I changed a little bit here. 24.62 is less than 25.52 but 24.62 is large than 20.97 so I put 1 star. Right, I hope that you can now understand what is the meaning of the result. In here, we can conclude that there is exit one co-integrating vector in the long term at 99% significant level. Right? But here, we can conclude that for lambda max, there is exist at least one co-integrating vector in the long term at 95% significant level. Right. So, the information of um, uh, co-integrating here is very important because the ECT term, error correction term generated in the ECM model, it really depends on how many co-integrating vector appear in the joint hansen Josili system. Therefore, if only one role here, we call, it, we call this one role, this one, the first one here is row. Okay, this is the row. Only row 1 appears star. There is 2 star here and 1 star here. So, row 1 have star. But row 2 doesn't have any star. And row 3 also doesn't have any star. So, we said only one co-integrating vector in the system. So, how many ECT term have to generate? is only one co-integrating vector can be generated in the ECM model. If we have also star here, if I change the result here, I put 22, 22, meaning that I have to put star here as well. When I put star here as well, meaning that the, the first role has star, so one co-integrating vector, Roll 2 also star, have star here. 
So we have two co-integrating vector. In row 3, we don't have any star. So how many error correction term we have to generate for error correction model? The answer is two error correction term. Alright. So I hope guys you can understand all my explanation here. The point is you must know how to generate this result in eView software. Then you must know how to read the result like what I explained here. And from the result here, you must know that this is very important. You must understand how many co-integrating vector appear in your system of co-integrating. Therefore, that result will appear. Uh, very related of how many error correction term you have to develop for error correction model. In this case, let's back to the real result. In this case, only one co-integrating vector appear in the first row. No star at all in second row. And there is no star again in generate star here in the third row. So only one row have star over here and over here. So only one co-integrating vector in the system of error correction model. Yeah, You only have to generate one error correction term put in the error correction model. Okay, where you can develop the error correction term, I will explain in the next video. Alright. Thank you.